Hello, I'm Donna Pryor, CEO and founder of the Global Liver Institute. I'm very proud today to be able to bring you our liver cancer lessons, part of our educational series, bringing you experts from around the US and from around the world. Today, I have the honor of talking with Dr. Richard Kim, who is section chief of GI medical oncology at the Moffitt Cancer Center. Today, we'll be talking about treatment options for liver cancer specifically hepatocellular carcinoma. We are honored to have Dr. Kim as a member of the Global Liver Institute Liver Cancers Council. Hello, Dr. Kim. Hello, Donna, how are you? I'm well, thank you so much. So um, it is uh, exciting to be able to say that there are more and more treatment options available to patients with liver cancer um, over the past few years than there have ever been. Um, so let's discuss today a little bit about um, the different uh, types of liver cancer or, or stages and where the different types of treatment options uh, would apply for, for, those type, for those patients. Sure. So if you look at the big picture of management of hepatocellular carcinoma, I think you could sort of uh, say there are four broad categories. Uh, there are two ways, really only way to cure the disease, I would say. Uh, one would be a transplant. Um, unfortunately, that would only apply to maybe uh, five to 10% of the patients. Um, the other one will be a liver surgery, liver resection, where they just go in, take out the uh, lesions in the liver, which I would say probably around 20% will be a candidate for, for, for that. And the main issue with that is uh, a lot of patients have underlying liver cirrhosis, which may prevent them from getting liver resection. Then the other two categories are what, what I call a local therapy, uh, such as chemoembolization or radioembolization or radiofrequency ablation or microwave ablation, where they go into the liver directly and um, give treatment there. And the last but not least is a systemic therapy, where we now have a lot of agents that we use in the systemic therapy, which has changed compared to, let's say, two or three years ago, where we only had one oral TKI available. Now there are several of immunotherapies available, there are anti-VEGF drugs available, and also um, several um, of TKIs available as well. But I, I have to point out that even though we have come a long way, those systemic treatment and local therapy, really we're, it's, it's not a curative intent, it's trying to sort of prolong life. I guess that's our goal of those things. But we've come a long way that the patients are living much, much longer than in the past. That is really exciting to hear. Um, what are some of the side effects that people may experience? Well, I'm very familiar with the side effects of transplantation, uh, being 26 years now post-transplant, um, and understand what that experience uh, you know, is, and segmentation has a certain recovery time. But for the systemic therapies, sure. what is the experience like? Sure, so systemic therapies right now, we could uh, put into like three different categories. One is a TKI or kinase inhibitor. Usually these are pills that blocks many pathways. And currently at this time, there are a couple of one that's FDA approved in the first line or second line. For example, there's a drug called sorafenib, lanvatinib, uh, regorafenib, and cabozamib. These are the four drugs that's currently FDA approved to be used in the first or second line. And this uh, of the TKIs have a lot of, has some side effects that one should be aware of. Uh, I think, the most commonly, I, I would say fatigue is one of them. Um, it is um, also, you may have problem with the GI toxicity with diarrhea, uh, skin problems sometimes, a skin rash reaction. Uh, some of the drugs can cause high blood pressure. Uh, and, uh, and last but not least, it can also uh, cause what we call a hand-foot skin reaction, where your hands become a little bit tender and peel off. So those are the, some of the general side effect profiling of a kinase inhibitor that we see. But it is not a chemotherapy. I want to make that clear. It's a targeted therapy. So it's not the side effect you'll see with chemotherapy, such as accounts dropping or maybe even hair loss. A little bit different side effect profile. It is a targeted therapy. I, I want to make that clear. Uh, but it, it, those are the side effects that one could see. The other, uh, toxic, other um, drugs that we use commonly now is immunotherapy. I think this has really changed the landscape. Uh, currently, uh, it's been used in first line mostly now with a combination uh, with uh, bevacizumab. Uh, the immunotherapy by itself is very well tolerated. It's by, and as you can see from the name, it's allowing your own immune system to fight back. That's the whole concept. 
And uh, however, the, the very, the, one of the side effects one should be aware is that if, you're over, if your immune system becomes too overactive because of the drug, it causes autoimmune process, right? So it can affect your, it could attack your liver or your colon, cause autoimmune colitis, autoimmune hepatitis, autoimmune issue with a thyroid issue as well. Once again, luckily, by, as a single agent, those are uh, very far and few, uh, but those are the side effects that one should be aware of. The other class of drug that's currently approved is an anti vegf drug, which is a drug that, block, that works on angiogenesis, blood vessel growth. And these are drugs called like bevacizumab and remucirumab. And the, one of the biggest side effects of those is that it can cause bleeding, okay? especially patients with liver cirrhosis that has a, what we call portal hypertension, where their spleens are big, they can have variceal bleed, you know I'm saying? So some of those patients that we put them on, we actually do a scope, we do an endoscope to go inside to make sure that there's no varices. If there is, we ban them before we start on it. So that would be the, some of the side effects that one should be aware if you're getting any of those anti-angiogenic agents. And how long is uh, the typical sort of treatment uh, episode for, for a liver cancer patient? Sure. So depending on which regimen you start on, um, you would, we would do it for about two to three months, arbitrarily. Then we do another CAT scan to see if the patient is uh, responding, uh, not responding, or staying the same. So if they have a stable disease or they're responding, obviously we continue on with a different type of agent. However, um, right now in 2020, at least, uh, we have so much available agents available that even if one fails one typical uh, agent first line, they're planning to go in second line, even third or fourth line, as indicated. So liver cancer um, traditionally has had a very low survival rate, um, at below 20%. Um, the Liver Cancers Council has a goal of doubling that survival rate, sure. at least mm -hmm. to start. Are, are you seeing with the new treatment options available, um, that survival rate increasing and us getting closer to that goal? Oh, definitely. Without a doubt, definitely. And the reason for that, you know, survival, let's give you an example. Back in 2007, uh, when I was a fellow uh, at that time, uh, the median over survival in a phase three large study in uh, liver cancer was about 10 to 12 months. Okay, so at that time, if, at 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago, if you had advanced liver cancer, uh, with the available agents out there, you know, and median average, they lived about 10 to 12 months. Now, based on the most recent data uh, they presented at, at our meetings, now the median survival, we're looking at about maybe 20 months plus, okay? So these are patients with advanced disease, okay? And reason that these patients are living longer is obviously we have better tools, maybe better ways to treat them with local therapy, better surgeons maybe. Uh, however, I think one of the progress that we've definitely made is more available agents for these patients uh, to get on, to get exposed to. So if they're healthy enough to get exposed to all these agents that's out there, those patients will do much better and hopefully will reach that goal right now. But as of right now, the median survival, average survival for advanced disease seems to be maybe hovering a little bit over 20 months, which is pretty amazing. Dr. Kim, thank you so much for this liver cancer lesson on treatment options in liver cancer.